Welcome back to the JavaScript Essential, Essential Training Series. I am Mike King, your host. And in this tutorial, we'll be talking about operators in JavaScript Part 1. This will actually be a two-part series as we look at the operators that we can use inside of JavaScript. So JavaScript operators. Operators in JavaScript are similar to operators in many other programming languages. And we will use operators throughout our programming experience. So it's great that you really get a good handle on how they work and what they are and how we use them inside of our programming which is what I plan to do in this two-part series. And if you purchase the tutorial, you'll actually have a hard copy of these in PDF, so you can actually print these out and keep those alongside your desk as you're programming, because there, there are quite a few operators and you really need to understand how they work. So operators are used to perform mathematical functions, assignment and comparison functions, logical functions, and type functions inside of JavaScript. As we learn the programming language, we'll use operators throughout our learning journey as we make comparisons and loops, as we do um, conditional statements, we use operators, assignment operators, all the time as we're programming. So it's really a good idea that you get a good handle on what they are and how they work. So let's look at the operators we'll use most often as we program in JavaScript. And this first chart is the arithmetic operators that we use inside of JavaScript. You'll notice the operator is the plus sign. Its description, we actually do addition with it. We can actually add the sums of values together. We have a subtraction operator, which gives us the difference of values. We have a multiplication operator, which is the product of values. A division operator, which is the quotient of values. All of those you should be very familiar with. The modulus operator is a little bit different. It's not something that you normally use in your everyday life. It actually gives us the remainder. In other words, if I take two values and I divide them with the division operator, the modulus would be the remainder of that division. And I'll actually show you that in the lab. Then we actually have the increment operator, which is two plus signs, and the decrement operator, which is two minus signs. And again, we use those a lot inside of our programming, and I'll demonstrate those in the lab also. So let's go move into our development environment and demonstrate the mathematical operators inside of JavaScript. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop out of our presentation, drop into our development environment. I want to confirm the Apache server is up and running. I want to go ahead and load Sublime Text 3, which will be the text start I'll be using for this demonstration and Google Chrome will be the browser I'll be using. I'm still in section one of the JavaScript training. In the event that you purchase the tutorial set, you have all these files. I am still in section one, and I'm going to actually do a save as. I've got my template file, .html file loaded. Let's do a save as. We're going to save this as operators underscore one .html, because we're probably going to have a couple of these files. Now I want to go back into my section one. Let's go to read load and load the actual operators underscore one dot html so we have a file to work with i'm just going to go ahead and change the title to operators and in my container i'm going to go ahead and give us an h3 heading didn't do that the last couple but i want to do that because we're going to actually have quite a few demonstrations in here operators in javascript go ahead and close out that h3 and then put an h4 right below it the first one we're going to look at is the arithmetic operators inside of javascript so i actually want to tag these because we're actually going to have quite a few different operators we're going to look at throughout the course of these demonstrations so i'm going to put an arithmetic and then i'm going to go ahead and close that h4 let's go ahead and save all those changes Refresh our browser window to make certain that we're in the right file, which we are. Excellent. And coming right below that, and we know, I mean, we're farther enough along in the training now to understand that we've got to have script tags. If we're going to do any demonstrating inside of JavaScript, so I'm just going to go ahead and bring in my script tags into my body elements. And I'm going to come down a few lines and put in my closing script tag. So the first thing I want to do, let's look at the mathematical operator. We've already looked at this in a few tutorials, so I'm going to go rather quickly. I want to clear a couple of variables. So I'm going to have variable, and we're just going to have, I'm going to use variable num1. I'm going to say that that is equal to 10. I'm going to create a variable num2. That is going to be equal to 20. And I'm going to create a variable num3. And I'm going to have that one equal to 15. Notice I've ended every one of my statements with a semicolon. And again, we're just going through the best practices of what we need to do to do this correctly. So the first thing I'll demonstrate, let's demonstrate that addition operator. So to get the addition operator to work, I just have to put down, and we're going to use, um, I'll use document.write so we can actually see the output. 
And remember that inside of our parentheses, we can actually put these values. Now I could actually type the entire thing here, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a brand new variable and I'm going to create this variable as sum and it's going to be equal to num1 plus num3. And that with a semicolon and then inside my document.write, I'm going to say to display the value of sum and that with a semicolon. So if we save our changes, great time for you to pause if you want to type this in. We go back and refresh our browser, we should see the sum value inside of our document of 1 and 3. We know that 1 is 10, 3 is 15, that gives us sum of 25 and we actually displayed that to our screen. So the addition operator is very easy to understand. If I wanted to actually look at, and I'm actually just going to come down here and um, no, let's just leave it like that. We're fine. We're fine. I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do next. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another variable. And this one's also going to be sum1. Or actually, that's good. Sum1. And I just want to have num3 minus num1. And that. And let's go ahead and display the value of sum1. We're subtracting, well that's all right, I'll still use a sum. And we've got five. So we know that one's working perfectly. If I wanted to multiply these, so I say variable of num3, or actually let's um, just call this one a product, equals, let's look at num2 times num1 and it with a semicolon let's come down in here and put in product save that refresh our browser window and now we have the product of num2 which is 20 multiplied by 10 and again these are basic mathematical functions I'm sure that you understand how all of these work let me demonstrate the modulus one because that's the one that you don't use very often or you probably haven't ever used if you're not a programmer we use it quite a bit in programming, but let's look at a modulus and how a modulus works. So what I want to do is if I took the modulus of 15, or actually let's take the modulus of 20 divided by 15. So I'm going to say variable, let's just call this variable modulus. So my variable modulus is going to be equal to 20 divided by 15. Now we know that that should be 1 with 5 remaining. But because of the modulus operator, all we're going to see here is a value of 5. And we actually use this quite a bit. So this is one you want to get familiar with. Let's go ahead and save that change. Refresh our browser window. And we can see 1.33. So I've actually gone in here. And my leftover, if I take 15 and I divide 20 by 15, All right, we know we goofed that up because what I did is actually used the division operator instead of the modulus operator. And that's why we didn't get the correct response. I actually went in there and looked at one that I knew what the answer should be because nine, if I take nine of the modulus of two, I should have one. And it actually came back as 4.5 because I was actually using the division operator. Whenever we're using the modulus, we use the percentage sign. So if I actually wanted the modulus of num2, because I believe we actually took num2 and divided that by num3 and now that I actually have the modulus operator there my response should be 5 because I have 5 left over when I take 15 divided into 20 it will actually divide in there one time with 5 remaining and that's what modulus shows us it's the remainder so if I refresh that you'll see that we've got that 5 remainder and again you've got to use the modulus operator not the division operator like I did by mistake so keep that in mind. What modulus always shows us the remainder of our division. And that's what we use it for. We actually use it for the remainder. And usually what I'm using it for is odd or even. I'm usually looking to see if I have one left over or if it's zero, because then I'll do a conditional statement based on that when I'm doing programming. And you'll see that quite a bit. One other one I want to look at real quick that you may not be as familiar with is the plus plus and the minus minus, the increment and decrement. And all it does is in our conditional loops, if we have a conditional loop, let's say that I have a variable that um, I'll say num4 
and this equals 5. And then I'll come down. Of course, we have to learn how to spell num4 first. And then I'll come down, and I'll say num4 plus plus. And what that does, it actually takes the value that's currently in num4 and adds 1 to it. So if I were to come in here inside my write statement, and I say num4, write that to the screen, we know that we gave it a value of 5 here, then we added 1 to it, so now it should be 6. And you'll notice we do have 6. And if I did this again, so if I come down and say once again, num4 plus plus, so now it's actually going to be 7. Every time we add that plus plus to it, let me go ahead and save the changes, we're actually adding 1 to the value. Same thing if I subtract from it. If I create a variable here and I call it variable my num5, and I make that variable equal to 10, and then I come down here and say variable, or actually not variable, I say num5 minus minus, and what I've done now is I've subtracted from it. So when I actually display num5 on our screen using the document.write, go ahead and save all the changes, now that will actually be a value of 9. So plus plus adds 1 to it, minus minus subtracts 1 from it. And again, these are used quite often in our conditional statements, especially in our while loops. We'll actually add 1 to the value, or in our for loops, we'll add 1 to the value, because it actually puts a counter on this thing, so we can run that loop a certain number of times, and then it stops. Or we can subtract, subtract the number, run that again a certain number of times, and then it stops. So the arithmetic operators, very important inside JavaScript. We've gone through all the ones you should understand. Now let's look at one other different set of operators inside JavaScript. All right, so let's drop out of our development environment and drop back into our presentation for a minute so we can look at a different set of operators inside of JavaScript. And these are called our assignment operators. We have the equal sign, which actually assigns a value. We've used that one a lot as we've set up our variables. It actually assigns a value to a variable. So it assigns to something. We have the plus equal, which is add and assign. We have the subtract equal or I'm sorry, subtract a sign, which is subtract and assign. We have the multiplication equal, which is multiply and assign. Then we have the divide equal, which is divide and assign. And then we have the modulus equal, which is divide and assign modulus. And again, we'll, we'll walk through these and demonstrate them in our lab. The ones we use most often here are the assign, the add and assign, and subtract and assign. Those are the ones I use a lot when I'm programming inside of JavaScript. The other ones are nice to know, not used very often in most of our programming code. And you'll see that as we work through our demonstrations. So let's get into our development environment and demonstrate the assignment operators inside of JavaScript. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and minimize the presentation, get back into our development environment. So let me go ahead and bring up Sublime Text 2 or 3 and bring up Google Chrome. That'll be our browser of choice this time. I'm going to do a save as. Don't want to overwrite this file in the event you have access to the files. I'm going to do this operators underscore two. Save that change. I'm going to go in here and put assignment operators for our H4. I'm going to save the change for my operators underscore two. Let's go back here and load operators underscore two for assignment operators. I'm going to go ahead and pull out everything that's between our script tags because we're basically going to start from scratch. These are the assignment operators inside of JavaScript, and I want you to understand how they work. The first thing is the equal operator, and we have already done that one so many times you should be very familiar with it. When I put a variable and I give a variable name of x, and I say it is equal to, what I'm doing is I'm actually assigning a value to that variable, and that's the equal sign. It is an assignment operator. It assigns a value to something, whether it be a numeric value or a string value. The addition assignment operator, the plus equal, adds a value to an already current value. So what I mean by that, let me come down here. So we have this variable x, and that is equal to 5. And if I say x plus equal, so now I'm taking that addition assignment operator, and I'm saying 25. So what happens now when I come down here and say document.write, inside my parentheses, and I say I want to display the value of x, and that with a semicolon, can anyone guess what x would be? If you guess 30, you are correct. And the reason being is because what I'm doing is I'm taking the current value of x, 
that's this value right here, and I'm adding to that current value 25. So I could do the very same thing right below here. I could say x plus equal 15. So again, we know that the first one was 30. The second one, now we should actually be displaying 45. Because again, I'm taking the current value of x, which currently is 30 based on what we did here, and I'm adding an additional 15 to that. This comes in really handy in our programming, and you'll see as we work through our demonstrations, there's a lot of times when we use this plus equal operator inside of our programming. The, the minus equal operator works this basically the same way, but in reverse. So what I'm doing here now, if I say x minus equal, so I'm taking the current value of x, and I'm minus equaling, if I say 45, that should take my current value of x now back to zero. So if I save this, refresh my browser, now we're taking the value of that variable back to zero because again, I've taken the current value of x and I've subtracted 45 from it. And again, we use these quite often. You actually saw some demonstrations earlier where we use the assignment operator, the plus, the addition operator, as a concatenation symbol. And we do that often also. So let's create a variable. And that variable we're going to call text1. And we're going to say it's equal to Mike. I don't know why I keep getting that capital I when I do Mike. Now I'm going to take another variable and I'm going to say text2, txt2. And that's going to be equal to Smith. So now I have two string variables, text1 and text2. And if I want them displayed on my screen and I want them joined, I can actually join them using what's called the concatenation operator. So now let's create another variable called text3. And this is going to be equal to text1. And I'm going to say plus, and I want to put a space in between them. So I've got my quotation marks with a space in the quotation marks. Then I'm going to take that concatenation symbol and say text2. I'm going to end that with a semicolon, and I'm going to go tell my document.write command display text3 inside my browser. And what I've done is I've taken those two string variables and I've joined them together using this concatenation operator. So now you'll see that we've got Mike Smith, and because I put the space between the quotation marks, I actually have a space between the names. If I didn't have that there, if I would have just joined them, if I save that change and just join those two together, you're going to see it's just one word that kind of runs together. Kind of like the camel case word that we were talking about earlier in an earlier tutorial. Now the plus equal assignment here works with text also. And let me show you what I mean by that. What if I created a variable? And we'll call this variable text3. And it's going to be equal to, it has been a, and I'm going to leave it there. Then I'm going to come down. Let's end that with a semicolon. And I'm going to create another variable text4. A cold and rainy day. So I've got these two statements. And now what I can do is I can use that plus equal to create another variable. So let's create a variable, and we'll call this one txt5. And that is going to be equal to text3 plus equal, or I could kick it, but I'm just going to plus equal text4. Save those, save those changes, come down here and put in text5 inside my document.write. Now keep in mind what we've done, because this is not going to appear correct. Join this together, refresh my window. I've got the double A's where they join, and actually what I wanted to have was a space. I could put my space either there, or I could put my space here. But one of those spaces I wanted to actually create a space, but you'll notice we've We've joined those two together using that plus equal. We could have done it a couple ways. We could have actually just added it right on to the existing variable. I could have said right here, text3 plus equal. And then it would have taken the variable text3 and added this to it. So now when I come in here and say text3, 
So there's a couple ways we could have done this. And again, I just want you to get used to using these assignment operators. Not quite certain why I didn't get my display. That should have worked. Hang on, let's see what we did here. Oh, semicolon. Talked about that when we were talking about syntax and structure. Well, always, semicolons will always bite you. Yeah, we just had to remove the variable keyword before that text three, because technically what I was doing is I was overwriting the variable. But notice now we use that plus equal and it adds that cold and rainy day. When we save the change, refresh our browser, it adds that cold and rainy day, just like we had done when we actually put the two together separately. So there's a couple different ways that we can do things. It's just important to understand that using these operators inside JavaScript gives us the opportunity to do a lot of different things inside of JavaScript using these assignment operators and arithmetic operators. In the next tutorial, we're actually going to look at some comparison and logical operators and some type operators in JavaScript because those two are very important as we learn how to program in JavaScript. So I look forward to seeing you there.